stress in your fish tank is not a good thing. If your fish are stressed, it will lead to ill health. Stress is not good for anyone. We know with humans, if we're stressed all the time, continually, over a long period of time, it leads to all kinds of sicknesses and problems. Same with the fish. If they're stressed, even low levels of stress, over time you'll have sick fish that will not perform or grow the way you want them to. Stress is such a killer, we ought to make sure that it's not in our tank. The first thing to do is keep the fish feeling safe. And that is, have a tank that's got a reasonable depth to it. Uh, you know, the water conditions are nice. Fish like lots of water movement. They like lots of air in the water. Keep them feeling comfortable and safe. And keep them in semi-darkness. Not darkness, not direct sunlight. Just semi-darkness, the fish are happy. They much feel much happier. Now, some of the signs of stress are, the first one we'll talk about is skittish or easily disturbed fish. You know, you might walk past the tank and the fish will scatter about, even bang into the side of the tanks and do, do some really silly things and knock themselves around. You know, they're fish that are skittish. They're not, there's something wrong with them. You know, they're not happy. Um, the second one is gasping at the surface. Now, if fish are gasping at the surface, big sign to take action. There's probably low dissolved oxygen levels in the tank. There could be something else as well. There could be something else going wrong. So if you see the fish gasping at the surface, take action, check the tank immediately. The other thing is strange swimming behavior. Now, if you see the fish swimming and then flashing is the term that's used, they'll swim over, bang their sides on the, on the bottom of the tank. They're usually being irritated by some kind of parasite, most likely the one called Ick ICH. And we can talk about that in detail. We usually give lots of detail about that in our training courses. The other one is loss of interest in their feed. Now you'll find a pattern after a while, you give the fish so much feed per day, they take it up, they eat it all within 20 minutes, and you know that's the correct amount of food, then suddenly they'll go off their feed. And I mean suddenly, not a seasonal change of food uptake, but just a sudden change of food uptake. That's a good sign that there's something's gone wrong in the tank. So check all your parameters straight away. Stress is caused by poor water quality in the tank. That's one of the first causes to look out for. And when I say poor water quality, firstly I'm talking about your parameters. That's pH, nitrate, nitrite and ammonia levels. Now these levels have got certain parameters that you should operate within. And we discuss those in great detail in our um, training classes and also in our publications. So you can find out what they are, that's not hard to do. But you must make sure you keep those parameters uh, within range in order to have fish that are not stressed. The next thing is visible solids in the water. Now I'm not talking about some visible solids in the water immediately after feeding time because obviously there will be fragments of feed in the tank immediately after feeding time. But let's say three or four hours after feeding you can still see visible solids in the tank. That's a good indicator of your water quality is not just quite good enough. Um, if you see that perhaps you should think if you don't have a filter you should think about fitting a filter to your system. Doesn't have to be fancy, doesn't have to be expensive. Can just be a simple swell filter or a simple uh, settlement tank filter. You'll be surprised how effectively they work. Low dissolved oxygen. Now low dissolved oxygen is a real doozy because if your oxygen gets too low and your fish are gasping at the surface, they are very stressed, believe you me, and you'll soon have major problems. Dead fish on your hands. If the low dissolved oxygen persists for too long and you have some dead fish, you'll probably have fish die in days afterwards because, because of the event, they've had their gills damaged, they've suffered stress, and you'll be picking dead fish out for some days. Not a good sign. Dissolved oxygen, low levels of dissolved oxygen is just not good. The next cause is bullying. If you have three or four males in your tank, for example, that are reaching sexual maturity, the old bantam rooster syndrome starts to set in and they'll fight for dominance. And fish even like tilapia or jade or silver perch that have got small mouths and can't really bite a bigger fish, they will bump them. They will swim around the tank and they'll bump them. And if anyone else is in their way, they'll do the same. They can cause a whole lot of stress in the tank, just like a couple of arguing and fighting teenagers in the house. Same kind of thing. Causes stress and uh, it's not good. So you need to identify those bullying fish. It's probably time to sit beside the tank with a cup of coffee in hand and just observe the behaviour. Try and find the guy who's giving trouble. Get him onto the barbecue so he doesn't cause trouble for the rest of the tank. 
excessive handling is the other one. People who um, have visitors come and they just delight in scooping that net in there and pulling some fish out so that people can have a look at them. Whilst it's nice for the people to have a look, it's not good for the fish. Can you imagine if someone stuck a big net down through the roof of your house periodically and scooped one, of you two, one or two of you out to put on demonstration? You'd be very stressed. The fish get stressed in the same way. There are times when you have to handle a fish, that's true. But there are ways of doing that and we can talk about that in another video. Hot or cold weather events, excessive ones. Now we've just had about six weeks ago in Australia, we had a hot weather event, got up to 46 degrees C. I think that's about 112 or 113 Fahrenheit. One Saturday, dreadful day. The water temperatures in our tanks rose up to 35 degrees C and we had some fish losses. Not good, but over 30 degrees C, the water is not able to hold the dissolved oxygen anymore and the fish suffered. Unfortunately that day I was out, so I wasn't home to see the gasping at the surface. I wished I had if I lost several good fish that day. Hot or cold events. Cold events can be just as bad in the opposite direction. Uh, just recently in North America, you had that Arctic blast come down. Um, I'm sure there were people that had difficulties with their aquaponic system due to that. Your heating bill would have gone through the roof. It's not good. So you need to protect against that kind of thing and try and foresee it a little bit. Diseases such as ICH, I-C-H, are a real menace in home aquaponic systems. In a home aquaponic system, there's not really that many diseases that a fish can get if you look after your fish as well. Um, for example, if you start off right and you buy them from a um, hatchery that can actually issue with a health certificate for the fish, and, and hatcheries, there are hatcheries that can do that, and they might charge you a few dollars more for the fish, but it's well worth it because you receive the fish, you know they're perfectly healthy, they've got no diseases and they're going to be fine. If you look after your fish, they arrive in that condition, you make sure they're stress free, they're fed well, there's plenty of aeration in the water, you'll have happy fish. Okay, let's recap. What can we do? The first thing is clean up the quality of the water. Check it out, make sure that it's good. I know that everyone really tries to keep on that one, but it can get out of control. Particularly if you're operating a very small system and you've, you've not fitted a filter, even if you've got a filter and you're not maintaining the filter properly, the water quality can get down. So first thing, clean up the water by cleaning your filter, making sure it's well maintained. By the way, when you clean it, don't clean it too well. You need to leave something there, but clean it up good enough. If you haven't got a filter, fit one. It's not that hard to do and you don't have to spend a pile of money. It can be a simple swirl filter or a simple um, settlement tank. Works extraordinarily well. If you've got a small system at home and you haven't uh, built it with a filter, and that's fine, there's lots of, in fact there's thousands of successful systems running without a dedicated filter on them. But it's important that you do not overstock. Now that's very important. Sto overstocking will stress your fish no end. You'll wind up with dead fish. If you're given a stocking rate uh, that's stated as being a maximum, then that's it. That's the maximum for that particular situation. Don't think, oh, I can do double that or I can do more than that. Uh, don't start adding some because you think, oh, some might di die, so I'll, I'll add some extra. Because if you add some extra, you can bet your life some will die. That's the way it will be. So stocking rates are very important to be adhered to and follow the program. As soon as you get fish that look like they're ready to be barbecued, get them out of there and barbecue them. Don't hold on to them for too long trying to have the biggest fish in the neighbourhood because that will lead to difficulties. The next thing is feed at the correct rate. Do not overfeed your fish. It's the biggest single problem in home aquaponics is overfeeding of the fish because people just want them to grow so fast so they keep putting more food in. Um, they see, oh, poor little Johnny fish in the corner, I didn't see him get some, so they put more food in and so it goes. And the next thing you've got rotting fish food in the system, starts to clog up the system and you have bad water quality. <coughs> okay, keep your fish happy and well and they'll grow really well. I want to just remind you about our training courses in which we cover this kind of thing in great detail and give you some really good tips on how to look after your fish. We have one day Discover Aquaponics training courses. Look at our website, you'll see when they're on. We have four day Future Farms aquaponics uh, training courses which are really excellent. Four days of intensive training. You know, it amazes me. Every time we put them on, we have people come from overseas to Australia. It's just amazing. Later on this year, we'll be down in Puerto Rico again, and I hope soon to be able to announce some training in Canada. That'll be great. Now, the real doozy is we've just been successful about three months ago in obtaining Australian federal government approval for a um, Certificate 3 in aquaponics food production. 
It is a really wonderful training course. Now this has been vetted by the government. We've had, to, it's, it took us nearly three years to get this approved. Big thing. Now we'll be running that training course in September. The first one of those will be running in September 2014. Look out for that. We've already got a lot of people putting their hand up saying they want to be involved in that course. It will run for two weeks. That's two weeks of five days a week, intensive, hands-on, in the greenhouse, in the training room, every single detail, and you'll walk away with that with an official, stamped, approved certificate. Wonderful thing. Okay, have fun. Keep aquaponing.